Airsoft, like any other game, hobby, or sport, has rules, guidelines, and etiquette. Sometimes that leads to certain things getting banned to keep things fair, competitive, or ultimately safe for everyone else enjoying the game. On YouTube, you'll see a lot of videos about airsoft replicas that should be banned because they're too OP. But are there any replicas that are actually banned? Is there a good reason to ban something in airsoft? Well, that's what I want to discuss today with a quick top five. So let's just do it. These are five banned airsoft guns, which of course is sponsored by Airsoft GI, who have been supporting us for so very long now, along with GNG Armament. They always help us out with these videos, so of course I want to show them some love, along with a special sponsor. This time from Australia, if you can believe it. Introducing Virtual Shot. With going to the range a hassle in some places and ammo swinging up and down in prices, Virtual Shot helps you harness your skills by turning your phone into a virtual shooting simulator with very little assembly, if any at all, to your firearms or to your replicas. It shoves the fire range into your phone with target games, hunting, and even zombie slaying and you can do it all with airsoft and even gel blasters. If you wanted to learn real shooting skills, it even has an interactive video course built into the app taught by an ex-army sniper team leader. It attaches in two ways. Just screw it onto a pick rail in front of your site to create a virtual scope. Or if you want to use it with your existing red dot site, just remove the scope piece and attach it behind your site if you have one. Then attach your phone to the other end of the rail and get onto the Virtual Shot app to get started. That's pretty much it, and there's more mounts on the way for pistols and scoped rifles, I'm told. I'm really picky on who I work with when it comes to sponsorships, but this is something I really like, and I think it can help a bunch of people out there in a fun way. Practice makes perfect, and the Virtual Shot makes that even easier. The first batch of Virtual Shot will be released soon, and you can find more details as well as an exclusive pre-order discount on their website. So use my affiliate link in the description below to get your setup to your door as soon as possible, so you can get started practicing from your living room. And once again, a big thanks to Virtual Shot for sponsoring this video. Now you have to know that we don't have any replicas that are really banned everywhere in the game. Yeah, certain replicas are made in such a way that they get pulled from the market and companies disappear afterwards, but everything on this list is banned either in certain places or in entire countries, and you'll understand what I mean when we start off with the 5th and 4th spots, which I'm giving to the Tokumuri AA-12 and the FLAC-5 slash FLAC-10. Let me start off by saying that these two have so much potential. I love airsoft shotguns but I'm stuck with either gas pump actions or spring powered pump. But starting with the TM AA-12, things really started to change up. We got one of the most requested shotguns replicated for airsoft as an electric tri shot with independent hop up adjustments. And it sold out everywhere before flopping soon after. I've legit probably only seen seven of these in the wild here in the US, and only recently did I learn that several sites in Japan had the Marui AA-12 banned. I knew some really conservative field owners here in America also had them banned, but here's the reason. It's just seen as too overpowered. Dishing out three BBs with a single blast in semi-auto or in full auto is overkill, especially in Japan where they restrict anything that can dish out a lot of unneeded damage since most Japanese sites are really close quarters. I mean, in a lot of sites you can't even run there. They just don't have the space for huge fields and arenas like we do in the United States. Long story short, field owners see stuff like this and they don't want anything like it blasting their customers. The Airsoft Innovations FLAC 5 and FLAC 10 takes all that hostility and cranks it up by a whole lot more. I mean, screw three BBs with a trigger pull, we're talking about five or 10 with no wind up from a gearbox. This thing makes the AA-12 and SGR-12 obsolete. The FLAC-10 is green gas powered, shoots 10 BBs a trigger pull, it doesn't need HPA tanks or a regulator, it takes M4 magazines, and since it's gas powered, you can fire it faster than you can with the AA-12, even in full auto. If you thought that the AA-12 was hated by some field owners, then you can bet there's a lot more airsoft innovations hate for the FLAC-5 and 10. You'll see that immensity will be a running theme in the judgment if a replica should be banned or not. It matters on just how easy it is to overshoot someone 
who's already acknowledging that they're hit. That doesn't mean that I agree with everything on this list that's banned, but I'll continue to explain. So next up at number three, we have probably one of the most controversial replicas that we've seen in a very long time. If you make any videos about these or bring one out to a game, someone is bound to talk some trash about you. This is the GNG Armament Speedsoft Gun 1, or SSG-1. Now for this bit, I'm just going to act like the people I've seen and heard from that have called their fields and arenas to ban this M4. This gives Speedsofters another way to bend the rules and overshoot newer players. We shouldn't be giving these people another tool to ruin our games, yet here's GNG Armament to the rescue, breeding more toxic players. Now coming back to reality, the first day I ever showed these off in Taiwan, I was seeing comments like these. I saw field owners gloating that they've already banned the SSG-1 before they even heard what they could do. Now some people did this because they saw them with a blade trigger setup, and I can kind of understand, and so did the higher ups at GNG, because they made that setup into an option, with standard triggers on the SSG-1s being the standard. Others implemented bans on the SSG-1 just to keep speed softers away from the arenas and fields. And I've gotta say, that's bullshit. This would mean that you're guilty before proven innocent. If you show up to an arena dressed casually, you're fine. If you show up to an arena dressed as a Milson player, you're fine. But now if we redressed one of those players and made them look like this, a lot of people will be suspicious. And if you were to throw an SSG-1 in their hands, banned. These are the same people that probably saw what it looked like and stopped looking into the SSG-1 any further, because if they did, then they'd realize that it's just a Gen 2 combat machine with a tilting buffer tube and a different barrel setup and handguard. That's it. I admittingly don't think it's pretty, but it works for the game of Airsoft, especially if you use a full face mask like a die mask, since you can actually look down the sights with the stock tilted. I'm honestly really tired of having to talk about how hypocritical SSG-1 bans are, so I'll leave it at that. If you think I'm wrong for defending people before they actually do something wrong, then let me know in the comments, but as long as you follow the rules and you don't act like a jerk, then I don't care how you play Airsoft. Even if that means you play in a $2,000 Milsim loadout while rocking an SSG-1 like this one. For the last two picks, things actually get dangerous. Now we all know about some places not allowing HPA or high pressure air or dual sector gear builds. Again, for how easily they can be abused by angry teenagers. Or at least, that's what I'm always told. And for the Airsoft Innovations 40 mic... <laughs> but did anyone know that we once had a launchable mortar the size of a full grown man's torso? It's not exactly a gun, but I thought I should mention the Hakatsu Hades Arrow. Although mostly plastic, it should be pretty obvious why dozens of sites had these banned in the United States and probably thousands worldwide. I honestly can't think of any places here in Texas where these things would be allowed in a game. It's a fun novelty, but as an actual tool at skirmishes, it's an insurance claim waiting to happen at best. It wasn't practical, accurate, and yes, they would even jam themselves in the ground like lawn darts, even with their plastic tips. So I would just say, just stick to tagging shells. I don't really think I need to go any further into how bad of an idea something like this is, but I think it helped us push pyrotechnics a little further into the game. This was a bad idea, I think, but now we have more safer options that can go much further than this thing ever could, so I'll give it that. It also gave us videos like these to take us back to Airsoft's past, and that's always fun. Now for the second spot, you might consider something like this cheating, since technically this isn't supposed to be used at any Airsoft game. So this is the Piper Strafer, and it probably has the fastest rate of fire that any Airsoft gun can achieve. Some people think that 25 rounds a second is unnecessary, others it's 30. And for DSG builders, 70 rounds a second can be an accomplishment. But this thing can spit out at 170 rounds per second, and that's with 6mm airsoft BBs or with .177 air gun pellets. Now a strafer came with a bunch of drawbacks, besides the $1,000 price tags that can be attached to them now. 
they're heavy, bulky, they need to be hooked up to a high pressure air tank, controls are pretty bad, however you don't get this thing to be subtle or sneaky. You use one of these to destroy things, and that's what it was actually meant for. Like I said, this wasn't supposed to be used at an airsoft game. This is basically a failed police riot control weapon. Could you imagine if these were actually used across the United States? Even with rubber pellets or tear gas balls, these would cause so many lawsuits. They're pretty simple in design since it uses air to basically ram BBs from its 6,000 round plus hopper through a single barrel as fast as possible. The trigger is just a valve switch for the most part, and there's no semi-auto to speak of. And did you see my last gameplay video? Because if you did, then you would have saw a build like this one, and it could spit out this rate of fire because inside it was basically a strafer replica. There's a few videos about the strafer and its different models, which are all great videos to watch, so look around. Just don't think that you'll find one easily or ever dream about actually using one at your local fields, because if people already complain about overshooting, then you won't make the arguments any quieter as you demonstrate what your new mini A-10 Warhog can do. And from absolutely shredding your opponents, we continue onto something that could have actually ruined Airsoft for the majority of the United States, because at the top spot, we have something that the ATF and US Customs began seizing by the dozens. Shell ejecting shotguns are always cool to mess around with, we can admit that, but with the Gen 1 APS shotguns, we had a lot of problems, especially when people realized they could chamber a real 12 gauge shell. Right away after saying that, I'm sure this video has already been barred from any ad revenue from YouTube, unless they didn't look too in depth. But I'm not going to discuss any further what modifications or things you'd have to perform to make the original APS shotguns detonate real ammunition. These wouldn't be the first replicas to have this problem, nor would it be the third or fourth time. Several Tanakas, WE Techs, and even Asahis from Airsoft's past were seized for being able to accept either major components from real firearms or their ammunitions. It only needs to fire once, even if it explodes in the process to be deemed unsuitable for the United States. That's really important to understand how Airsoft is regulated in the US. This would be why some gas blowbacks you see in Europe or in Asia can't even be imported into our country, and it's something that people really invested in the development of Airsoft are very aware of. I've seen maybe two photos from owners of these shotguns, and both were outside of the country, and they know full well of their possibilities, I'll say. Yeah, there's no way this video is getting monetized. This whole subject is very touchy, and I'm sure someone will be really upset that I even talked about such a thing. But I think this makes for a pretty cut and clear top spot holder for an achievement that I'm sure no manufacturer wants to be a part of. When you study a thing like airsoft and paintball or product development, you learn all sorts of weird and odd things like how people react to airsoft replicas around the world. And I definitely have a lot more countdowns and lists that I can put together on those subjects. The next one will probably be over five more airsoft guns that we want to see, and I definitely know the links will have to be on that list. But if you would like to see that video, then go ahead and subscribe now if you haven't already, or hit that like button. That stuff really helps out the channel, just like how telling me what you thought about what you saw here today with the comments down below does. After all, I can't do this kind of stuff without you guys. So I would like to thank you all for watching. And I also need to thank Airsoft GI, GNG Armament, and Virtual Shot, and every single US Airsoft channel member like Yo, I'm a Coconut, I love your name, Pinkatron, Beaver Gaming 64, and everyone else you see on your screen now. These guys keep the channel funded and help me with a lot of video ideas. They even picked this video to come out next. So maybe join them with the links in the description or with the join button on the US Airsoft channel homepage so you can see what videos will come out next or even get to see videos before anyone else can. I'd really appreciate anyone who looks into doing this. But until that next video drops from the city of San Antonio. This has been Scott Hollenbeck and I will be sure to see you all next time. <laughs>